Welcome to June's LeetCode Challenge. Today's problem is redundant connection. In this problem, a tree is an undirected graph that is connected and has no cycles. You are given a graph that started as a tree with n nodes labeled from 1 to n, with one additional edge added. The added edge has two different vertices chosen from 1 to n and was not an edge that already existed. The graph is represented as an array edges of length n where edges i has two nodes A and B, indicating that there's an edge between nodes A and B. Return an edge that can be removed so that the resulting graph is a tree of n nodes. If there are multiple answers, return the answer that occurs last in the input. So I feel like this should be marked as hard because I had personally no idea how to do it. But after looking it up, I get the idea. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to move through our edges, build up our tree, and find the edge that creates a cycle. Now, why is that? Well, you can imagine <clears throat> if we're building up this tree, we start with one and two, then we add one and three. But as soon as we add two and three here, you find that there's a cycle here, right? That means that this one has to be removed because as soon as we have a cycle, there's no way that this can be a tree. So essentially, really the question is what edge when we add creates a cycle and then just return that edge. Now we, how do we uh, formulate that? Well, what we're going to do is create an array that marks each node here. And say that we start with one and two, what we'll do is uh, see if each node is uh, pointing, what, what it's pointing to as its parent. And right now, currently each node is just pointing to itself. But when we say one and two, what we'll do is just update one. Um, like you can choose arbitrarily, but let's say we'll mark the Y, like we'll mark this one's parent as two. So this way we kind of know that we marked these two. These two are like union together. So when we add one and three, we have to check, hey, do these have the same parent or the same marker that these are like union of the same tree? Now here with one, we see one has root of two and three has root of itself three so it's not it's the same uh, so what we'll do is if it's pointing to itself we'll merge it with this this part so this one will not be a two now as soon as we get to two and three we find that well these have the same parent so adding this is gonna create a cycle right so we that's what we do we return this and we could find the parent by just recursively uh, calling up to see what the um, highest mark node is and each time we update everything and Eventually, all, all these should be the same if there was, if there was no cycle. And, and same way, let's look at this example. Uh, we'll have some sort of lookup that marks each one of these nodes. We we'll start with one and two, update one to two, two and three, uh, update this to two, three and four, three and four, update this to two, one and four, oh, what do we, what do we know? It's the same parent, right? And that's when we return one and four, and you can see the answer it indeed is one and four. And it makes sense, right? Because we add one and two, we add two and three, we add three and four. But as soon as we add one and four, oh, what, what, what happened here? This created a cycle. So they can't have the same parent. Okay, so let's begin by first figuring out what our n is. n is just gonna be the length of a set of all our edges. And what we'll do is just use the chain function, passing in the edges. That should give us all. So I'm just going to call it root, even though that's kind of a misnomer. But this will indicate to us what that representative node is of, of this tree. So I'll say for i in range of n plus 1. And I realized that 0 is going to be in there, but we'll just ignore that because, I mean, you know, it's 0 indexed. So okay, next, let's have a function that's going to recursively call up what the parent is. So let's say we pass in a value. We'll say if root.x equals x, well, just return x. But otherwise, um, return, we're going to recursively call the root.x to see how far up we can get to the parent here. Yes. Okay, so for, let's call it x and y in edges. Let's find the representative, and I'll just call it xr for x root and y root. And this will be recursively call x and recursively call y. 
So at this point, if xr equals yr, we've found the cycle, right? So that's when we just return x and y immediately. Now, otherwise, if um, the parents aren't equal, we need to set all these. We should set the one node that's by itself, if it is, uh, to the rest of the union, you know, uh, nodes. So let's see if uh, x r just say x equals x r. Then we will set root of x to equal yr. And the other way around as well, if y equals yr, if it's by itself, then set the y to equal to xr. Now finally, if none of these are true, we need to set, let's see, root dot xr equal to uh, yr. So that's kind of arbitrary, but it shouldn't matter at this point. All right, finally, that should be it. Like we can assume that there is a cycle in here, no matter what, and the given graph is connected. So uh, this algorithm should return something in the end. So let's see if this works. All right, so I think that's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So time complexity-wise, it's going to be n, worst case, n squared because of this recursive uh, call. Now, there is a method where you could reduce this down to O of n by using uh, disjoint set unions. Uh, but that requires like some stuff that I just didn't understand. I didn't want to you know, put that in here without really understanding it. And uh, sometimes like it works, and to me this is confusing enough. So I'm just going to end it here. Maybe someday I'll go back to you know try and understand that disjoint set union better. So all right, hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing. <laughs>